popular podcast i am athlete recently just dropped a video and one of the hosts pac-man jones said that black women are aggressive and i didn't even get offended because it's true even myself i can admit that i do too much i was even talking to my home career yesterday about it and that's called accountability like okay i might not always be intentional when i'm coming off aggressive but let me learn how to talk to people let me learn how to reel it back that doesn't mean let people walk all over you and disrespect you no but sometimes it's okay to be a, uh, the bigger person and just dial back choose your words wisely that will help you out in relationships friendships or any form of relationships throughout your life and trust me even to myself you will see a whole new light on how people treat you based on based off how you treat them man i'm gonna keep it real with y'all man i feel like most women from my community don't know how to talk to a man like they got some sense man you know i had to tell one girl one time say bro talk to me like you talk to that dude that signed your checks because i be seeing how you get down on your knees for him you see what i'm saying but because i'm not signing your checks you don't gotta treat me with no dignity and respect i feel that dude. i feel that you know this family too this ain't even like no regular person off the streets bro some of your family talk to you like they crazy but you want to see how aggressive and masculine some of our women can be just go to like a little boy football game or basketball game they be in the sidelines about to fight the referees and the other team moms and stuff like i told y'all a couple of weeks ago i seen a woman running down the sidelines so hard and talking crazy to the officials that she dropped her baby literally and didn't pick him up i'm talking about the baby on the ground crying did not pick him up and a lot of these women tongues are just sharper than razor blades man and they belittle men and they belittle women around them they just mean and toxic and just upset and nasty bro it's poisonous bro it is what it is a lot of women from my community behave like that and they ain't never gonna get nowhere acting like that bro this thing i've ever done i had a with three really 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 popular players and i had to sign an nfa and i know her daddy NDA. somewhere NDA. in a fetal Donors? position yeah. now in no shape or form am i saying the women in my generation were perfect but they were nowhere near as loose as the women from today bro the information that these women are willingly putting out there all willy-nilly is information you would have had to waterboard out of the women from my generation this is the most sexually promiscuous generation that i've seen it is what it is they don't care about letting you know what they got going on in the bedroom who they doing it with it's just weird to me bro she's a 10 out of 10 but she does only fans no nah, zero Zero. Yo, I'm with brother. I would never take an OnlyFans girl seriously, especially if she was having intercourse on camera. And really all it is OnlyFans stuff started during the height of the pandemic. They got desperate and needed money and that showed you what they were willing to do to get that bag. You can't deal with women who will sell themselves on a public platform when things get hard. You cannot deal with a woman like that. That woman has a price. Any man with some money could pay her to smash. If she'll do it on camera, she'll do it in real life for the right amount of money. Telling my girlfriend I can't pay rent this month, Frank. Mm. What's wrong? Man? What's wrong? I just need to talk to you. What? I just took my. I'm not gonna be able to pay the rent. Why not? Because I don't have enough money. You don't have enough money. So that means I get to help you. Yes, it does. I get to help you. Finally. You don't ever let me help you with anything. Sorry. I got it. It's fine. I get to help you with something. I don't. I don't. For once. Why? Because I'm, I like to help you and you don't ever let me. So I'm just I'm, I'm excited no, you, now. you shouldn't. Why? Because you shouldn't. Yes, I should. That's what I'm here for. To back you up when you can't. So... I'm excited. I ain't gonna lie, this little video put a smile on my face. It actually warmed up that place where my heart used to be. It's an ice box there. Nah, let me stop playing. But no, bro, I like the fact that she was willing to help her man, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to find women who aren't selfish today, bro. I know hypergamy is real. We all know that. But some of these women will literally give you the shirt off their back if you need it, dog. Some of them. What's the chances of you running into like a unicorn like that? I ain't saying it's strong, but bro, they do exist. That's all I'm saying. I'm just here to say they are a few good women left out here bro all men are the same all men are the same no they're not maybe you're just looking in the wrong areas you're not gonna find a good man up at the club you're not gonna find a good man up at a bar have you tried nerds they're taking over the world right now 
and all, a lot of them are buff looking like Goku out here, running like Naruto. Come on. Yeah, whenever I hear stuff like this, I'm already knowing what type of woman it is, man, because there is so much diversity amongst the male gender, bro. You know, you got some intelligent, loyal, faithful guys, and you got some dumb, unloyal, unfaithful guys, right? But what I will say is this, when the women say men are all the same, the first thing I say to myself, no, the men that you like, your type, they are all the same. You going after a specific demographic of men and they all run in the same circle. They all have the same central dogma. They all believe that they should be running through these holes and that's what they doing. It is what it is. Also, another reason why women is acting more like men nowadays is because they just losing their masculinity. Y'all not giving us what we need. If you, you can't have control like of the nigga. situation and you acting like a woman, how can we let our guard down and give you that control? On approach, act like the man. That don't make no sense. We need to be masculine until no, you, you show don't. us. Women until don't. you they show don't. us that no, you can be. Otherwise, we're not going to step into our femininity. Like, That's you wrong. femininity is not conditioned. If you femininity. have a vagina, you should always be feminine. If I'm dealing with a man, I'm going to be feminine regardless. If he is too soft or weak for me, I'm just going to, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to move on. Right. But I'm not Period. about to start acting like DMX. I I personally think when the masculine man sees a masculine woman, they run for the hill, and rightfully so. Y'all really serve no purpose in their life. Y'all are gonna bring drama, and y'all gonna bring down the value and quality of life that they already have. Growing up, I knew a couple of cats that we would consider as a man's man, right? And I've never seen them with a masculine woman. They women was like the most feminine, submissive, sweet, courteous, polite women you've ever seen in your life. Masculine and masculine, when it comes to genders, will always collide. A masculine man has to be with a feminine woman. A masculine woman has to be with a feminine man. That's the way it goes. I've seen so many masculine women belittle men. No masculine man is going to allow anyone to belittle him. So if a woman is doing it to you, automatically you should know you are feminine. It's that simple. You cannot refute that information. Uh, the definition of feminism is equality between men and women. If you look it up on Google. In this presentation, I'm going to prove to you that that in 2016 is not the case. There was a first wave of feminism, the suffragettes who campaigned for the vote and for equality. And then there was second wave feminism in around the 60s, campaigning for equality in sort of in domestic gender roles and things like that. So, and then recently there's been a third wave, third wave feminism who have consistently lied about things. For example, the wage gap between men and women that is a lie. 77 cents to the dollar is a lie. It doesn't take into account the different hours worked by men and women on average in jobs. It doesn't take into account the different jobs that men and women do. And it doesn't take into account a many, many other factors. Once you factor all these in, it is statistically irrelevant that the wage gap. This is just one example of the lies that have been <laughs> perpetrated by modern third wave feminism. Yo, I love the young brother's point about that gender wage gap because I've seen this play out in real time so many times when I was working, bro. I've seen guys literally pick up shifts from women who no longer wanted to work. After payday hit and they got a little money in their pockets, they'll give up one or two shifts. And guess what? Who will be there to pick them up? The men. I've never been in a workplace where the woman made more money than the man by outworking him. I've seen women have special treatment and privileges on jobs. When I sold cars, they used to send all of the men to the pretty girl girl to close them. I remember that like it was just a date. That's cool. She was a beast at her job, but bro, she got hand fed leads. It is what it is. I ain't trying to call out, but that's a fact. But every other job I worked at, the men clocked more hours. Therefore, they got more overtime. Therefore, their checks were bigger. They did the same job, though. It is what it is. Why? Who was that in the background? We saw right. that. Who, Who is that? In the Who's that in the background? Speak. You can talk. You've been talking to me the whole time. I have. I, I told you I was. <laughs> That's the guy you had sex with today? <sighs> three so you, so the guy you had sex fools. with today is in your house and you're on my show looking for a new guy? I'm on my I'm on your show to tell you that I'm single and if you know I find You're on my show to look for a new guy because that's what this show is about. Single so, but getting up so back I'm, blue out. I'm on the show just to put myself out there, yes. Yeah, you're on this you're on the show to meet a you new guy. There. That's what this show is about. You want to meet a guy while you have the guy you slept with in your house. What kind of quality man you think is gonna hit you up? <laughs> Gosh, just the one time I agree with her. Uh, I'm just being honest. I mean, 
I mean, I'm being honest too. What kind of quality man you think is gonna hit you up? I don't know. You tell me, Kendra. Not one. Okay. If you want to, and if you want to, if you want to attract a trifling guy, then so be it. Give him your Instagram page or your <laughs> Facebook page. So I do. Sleep. So I do want to know what makes me trifling for. You're on this. Okay. This guy is not my boyfriend, oh and he knows my that. God, yeah, bro. you had sex with him today. You think that makes it sound even better? I mean, yeah, no, it doesn't make it sound any better. But he is the only one that I'm sleeping with, and I was. And that's fine. What I'm I telling you is, any any guy worth anything that has his stuff together is not going to take you seriously. A guy, listen, but you're going to get a lot of men that's going to reach out to you because they're going to want to have sex with you. No, nope, I don't religious. want them to reach out to me at how you putting it, but God fearing woman. Can you understand that though? Okay, well, say goodbye. Y'all just witness what happens in real life, in real time. You're dealing with a woman, you just met her. She's telling you she ain't messing with nobody, but guess what? There's a guy that's blowing her back out and she's gonna run you and make you go through the motions and date her and be courteous and you gotta open up doors and take her out on dates and give her drinks and wine and dine her. Whole time, she gonna tell you she going to sleep and she texting another guy, okay, you can pull up. This is what happens every single day. Every single day. She was just stupid enough to do it on on camera on live on a famous person's live stupid it is what it is I'd be interested because usually when men have preferences it's looked at as shaming like you know what i mean like but when women have preferences it's funny it's funny like you laughing it's looked at as <laughs> not taken seriously like you know what i mean so what do y'all think about this topic like, I, got topic. I got a lot to say actually okay, okay. oh <laughs> i'm five eight mm -hmm. i prefer mm -hmm. tall men okay i can't see myself with a short man. So I'd rather have my heart broken by a tall man than a short man. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Ooh. Where are you going? Go, I should keep going, keep going. Just, just, yeah, uh, he gotta take time to process yeah, this. Keep going. Let me keep tell you why. <laughs> you know how disrespectful that is? To have your heart broken by a short man? And that's like, I knew she was you're not my type. Like you're not even my type to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah, us men, when we have preferences, that's called toxic, that's called misogynistic. We can't have a weight requirement. If I like light-skinned women over dark-skinned, I'm a colorist. If I like women who don't have kids over women who have kids, I'm wrong. So, you know, but a woman can say, I don't like no guy 5'9 and under. Like, that doesn't hurt a guy who's 5'8's feelings. Or a woman can say she don't like fat guys. She can say she don't want a guy who has kids. Or if he says he wants a woman that hasn't been sexually promiscuous throughout her whole life, now he's really in wrong he doesn't want a woman who's a feminist he doesn't want a woman who has 30 plus bodies but he's in the wrong for having standards in his life it's just it's such a double standard bro make it make sense a lot of is moving in with they bms and shit like that don't got their own crib not stabilized like come on like that's because his baby mama got section eight oh, bro women say this and i don't know who these it'd be the it'd be the barrel bottom of the barrel ass that y'all right. be dealing with talking about they, like shorty on the last show dealing with these lame ass kid bub ass and y'all want to pay all so I know women acting like they go on vacations and they living in an apartment with three homegirls, bro. Women What's cap too. With three no homegirls, but y'all be quick to call a man broke if he lived with three homeboys. I never said that, though. I'm not, again, you going I know back friends to, that you going they back have to, houses. You're going back have... to I. I'm saying women in general. Like I know you've seen women that clown living with a, a homeboy i'm convinced that these women be looking for these homeless dudes for these bums because you cannot convince me that every guy you know lives at home with his mom don't have a crib every guy i know for the most part have their own crib stable in the middle class more than 57 percent of black men are in the middle class and i'm assuming she's talking about black men she sound like she's from the hood somewhere in new york i ain't gonna lie to you i'm gonna judge this book by its cover we know she from the hood and since we talking about these hood fees bro did you know that one third of section eight vouchers are actually held by black black women did y'all know that out of all of the people in this country there are literally millions and millions and millions of people in this country but 33 percent of the people holding section 8 vouchers happen to be black women and they're the main one complaining about black men not having places to stay when the government is giving you a free place to lay your head now i ain't talking about all black women i'm talking about the ones like the one on this podcast right here 